Hi everyone, this is Muhammad Suhail. Today I am going to talk about the one act play. It was written by reputed Russian writer. The title of the play is The Proposal. Let me tell you something about the author. Anton Chekhov was a Russian playwright and short story writer. He was born in the year 1860 and died in the year 1904. He was best known for his short stories and plays. He also worked as a physician. His job as a doctor did not pay very well. So he did a lot of different things for money, including writing. He started writing virginally to support himself and his family. He began to take his writing more seriously, especially after the famous Russian writer who wrote to him and told him he had a lot of talent and should focus on the literary quality of his writing. Anton Chekhov was one of the first authors to use certain literary techniques such as stream of consciousness. A technique later popularized by James Joy. He believed that it was the job of a writer to raise question in the reader's mind and some of his short stories have open endings. He wrote nearly 14 plays and more than 200 short stories. This one act play, The Proposal, is a beautiful play about the tendency of wealthy Russian families seeks to tie up with one another through marriages to increase their property and wealth. They do not seem to be satisfied with what life has given to them. All the character, all the characters in the play are quarrelsome and arrogant in their ways. This humorous play is popularly known as a marriage proposal. Now, let's move on to the play. There are three characters in the play. Number one, Stepan Jiboko, a landlord. Number two, Natalia. Chibuko's daughter. The third character is Lomo, Chibuko's sniper. The scene opens in Chibuko's drawing room. Lomo enters and Chibuko rises to welcome him. He is wearing a dress suit. Chibuko expresses a great pleasure. He welcomes him and give, gives him a warm handshake. But he is surprised to see him in a formal dress and thinks that he is on his way to some engagement. Lomo tells him that he has no engagement except with him. He tries to explain the purpose of his visit but he get nervous and excited. Chubuko has a daughter named Natalia. She is 25 years old but unmarried. In fact, he has come with a proposal to marry Natalia. Lomo is so nervous that he, find it, he finds it very difficult to to tell Chibuko the purpose of his visit. He says that he has come to ask him for a favor, though he does not deserve it. 
Chibuku thinks that he has come to borrow money and asked him not to beat about the bush. After much hesitation and stammering, Lomo tells Chibuku that he has come to ask for the hand of his daughter Natalia. Chibuku feels very happy and kisses him. He says that his daughter Ashur that is Chubukul assures Domo that he will call his daughter Natalia and assures Lomo that she will accept this proposal. When Lomo is left alone, he feels that he is cold and his whole body is trembling. He thinks that Natalia is an excellent housekeeper, not at all bad looking, well educated. If he does not marry now, he will never get married. He has been already 35 years old. He has a weak heart and he suffers from palpitation. The worst of all is that the way he sleeps. He hardly lies down and begins to doze. When he gets a pull in his left side and something begins to hammer in his left shoulder and, his in, and in his head. He walks about a little, lies down again and feels the same way again. This continues the whole night. Marriage alone can bring this much needed peace and regularity in Lomo's life. Natalia comes and she is surprised to see Lomo because her father has told her that there is a dealer who has come to buy something. She begs to be excused for wearing an apron and old dress. She offers him smokes and talks about the weather. She is so surprised to find him in a formal dress and tells him that he seems to be looking better. She thinks that he is on his way to a ball. Lamo get excited. He is unable to express the purpose of his visit. He wants to be brief, but in his, but in his excitement, he is taught beating about the bush. He speaks of the old relations of the Lumos and the Chubukos. He tells her that his late aunt and his late uncle had a great regard for her father and her late mother. His property, that is Lomo's property, adjoins her his oxen meadow. Natalia is shocked when she hears that oxen meadow belongs to Lomo. She claims that Meadows are hers, not his. He tries to explain that once there was a dispute over the oxen meadows, but now everybody knows that they belong to him, that they belong to Lomo. His aunt's grandmother put the meadows free from all cost into the hands of peasant of her father's grandfather for a certain time while they were laying bricks for his grandmother. So these people used the meadows free of cost for about 40 years and began to consider the land as theirs. Natalia does not believe it. Lo is prepared to show the paper but of no use. She tells Lomo that they had owned the property for nearly 300 years. The meadows are not worth much 
but she cannot stand injustice. If he keeps explaining it for two days, she will not, she will not be convinced. Mantalya will not be convinced. She does not want to take his property and she refuses to give up what belongs to her. The discussion turns into a quarrel and a marriage proposal is totally forgotten. Natalia tells Chibuko that she will immediately send her reapers to the meadow. Lomo promises to turn them out. They shout at each other. In the course of their quarrel, when the quarrel is going on between Lomo and Natalia, Chibuko enters. Natalia's father enters. When he is arguing about the oxen meadows, he sides with his daughter. Lomo again tries to explain, but Chibuko does not listen. He tells Lomo that the letters cannot prove anything by yielding. He would rather give them to the peasant than let him climb them. Lomo becomes rude. Chibuko begs him to address him respectfully. Lomo calls Chibuko a land grabber and tells him that he will prove in the court of law. Chibuko gets furious and accuses his whole family. In this way, they start to pull each other's family. Chibuko tells Lomo that the letter's grandfather was a drunkard and that is his aunt had eloped with an architect. Lomo sees that Chibuko's mother was humpbacked. So they drag their ancestors in their foolish quarrel. Now Lomo get excited. The palpitation of his heart becomes unbearable. His eyes are blurred. His foot goes numb. It seems as though he was dying. He takes his hat and staggers out of the room. Chibuko warns him not to come into his house again. Both father and daughter curse Lomo and tells him all sort of dirty names. After Lomo has gone, Chibuko says that the fool had the courage to come to him with a marriage proposal. When Natalia hears that he had come to propose to her for a marriage and that is why he was dressed in her evening clothes, she began to weep and forced into an armchair. She blamed her father for not telling her that before. She asked her father to bring him back immediately. The poor father feels embarrassed. They have insulted him and throw him out of their house. And now he should call him back. How ridiculous. He feels like shooting himself. Natalia blames the fathers and calls him brutal. Chibuko rush, rushes out and uh, calls him back. Then what happened? Lomo returns. His heart is beating terribly. His side is hurting him. His leg is lame. Natalia feels sorry for, his, for her mistake. 
and admits that the oxen meadows belongs to Lomo. See, she so suggests that they should talk about something else. She wants to avoid every possibility of dispute and wishes Lomo to make the proposal straight away. She asks him he is going on hunting soon. Then Lemo replies that he expects to begin after the harvest. His dog Guess, the name of uh, Lemo's dog is Guess, has gone lame. Perhaps it is a dislocation or maybe he has been bitten by some other dog. Lomo is very proud of his dog. He has bought him, bought his dog for about 125 rubles and thinks it is very cheap. Natalia does not agree. Her dog Lee, that is the name of a dog, Lee, cost more than 85 rubles and he is in every way better than guess. They are again dragged into an argument over the superiority of each other's dog. In his opinion, Leap is over short. He has a short lower jaw and therefore he cannot catch his prey. Natalia cannot stand this. She thinks that her dog is pure bred. Whereas this dog is old, ugly and skinny. She does not like when a person does not say what he really thinks. In the course of hot discussion, Lomo again gets excited. He feels the palpitation of heart and his heart is bursting. Then what happened? The father, that is Chibuko, again enters the room. Both Lomo and Natalia turns to Chibuko for opinion. He says, Chibuko says, Guess certainly has his good points. He is from a good breed, had a good stride, strong hunches and so forth. But he has two fault, he is old and he has a short lower jaw. Lomo tells Chubuko that on hunting his dog, Guess had run neck to neck with the counter's dog, but the leap was left behind. Chubuko says that Count struck his dog with a whip, that is why he was left behind. Lomo reminds him that his dog was whipped because instead of running after the fox, he bit the ship. Chubuko does not agree. He requests Lomo to stop the argument. Chubuko gets angry. He tells Lomo to stop but to stay at home with his palpitation. He is not fit for hunting. Both uses bad words for each other's and Lomo falls into an arm chat. Natalia thinks Lomo is dead and she shouts for a doctor. Her father, Chubuko, lifted a tumbler of water to Lomo's mouth but he did not drink. Chubuko once becomes unhappy over being a father of a crowned daughter. In the meanwhile, Lomo comes to his sense. And Chubuko puts Lomo's hand into an Natalia's hand to complete the proposal. The father gives his blessings and requests them to leave him in peace. But once more, Latania asks Lomo to admit that Guess is worse, worse than Lee. Again, they start a quarrel over, over the dogs. 
So this drama, that is the one act play, displays the greed of rich families to marry their children into other wealthy families with the aim of enhancing their wealth. So the play ends happily. It shows how sometimes silly argument dominate the original purpose of communication. Now, what does the play, the proposal, teach us in today's time? Why are people going away from each other? The play, that is display the proposal, it demonstrates how easily anger and argument can destroy a relationship. So what happened as a result? It is necessary to keep our anger under control to maintain a healthy relationship. Arguing over insignificant or small topic is harmful and time consuming. If someone makes a mistake, rather than getting furious and arguing with them continuously, one should be willing to forgive and forget. People nowadays prefer to see only the good in others and are reluctant to accept their flaws. So what happened as a result, maintaining a positive and cordial relationship with others. Thank you all for watching. We will meet again in the next video.